response to this, come back to the states and get into some more uh, national news. Missouri governor vetoes bill nullifying federal gun grab. Now, this is Governor Jay Nixon. He declared his independence from the Missouri state legislature on July 5th by vetoing a bill passed overwhelmingly from that body. HB 436 was titled the Second Amendment Preservation Act and would have denied the federal government the authority to enact any statute, rules, regulations, or executive orders which restrict or prohibit the manufacture, ownership, and use of firearms, firearm accessories, or ammunition exclusively within the borders of Missouri. Now, the article goes on to point out that he may have did this because he wants a separation of powers and so forth. So I would be interested in hearing uh, the man's testimony from his own mouth as to why he thought this was a good idea. But just on the outside looking in, to me, this seems like a very bad idea because now the federal government could come in and say, uh, we don't like your stance on uh, so-called assault rifles. We don't like your stance on high-capacity magazines, as they're called, even though they're standard edition magazines because I have a 30-round magazine, which came standard issue with, with that gun. Uh, we don't like your stance on ammunition or whatever the case may be. So I'd be very interested in hearing this man's uh, reasons for vetoing this bill because we think about cities like Chicago that have such high gun violence. And we have this actually, actually from the Chicago Tribune, Chicago shooting victims. Now, this is an uh, article that has been updated as of July 2nd. You can see it right there on your screen. And it says, as of July 2nd, there have been over 1,040 shooting victims in 2013 alone. Now, those aren't necessarily deaths. Those are just people who had been shot. And you can see it right there on your screen, the various areas of Chicago. And it makes me wonder, Chicago, which is supposed to be, which should in reality be the safest city for against gun violence. You know, they have the very strict gun laws in the city of Chicago. So why do they have so many shootings? Now let's turn to this article now. We have it on the screen right here. How many people have been killed by guns since Newtown? Now this is the article from Slate. I did a, a little piece on this a little bit earlier this year. And it basically goes through all the uh, alleged gun uh, shootings, gun related activities within the United States. From the time I spent on the site, it does appear to be accurate from the from the few things that I looked at. But let's scroll down a little bit. And you can see it right there on your screen. Chicago, Illinois, 210 people killed. Now, remember in our last article, they said over 1,000 people had been shot, including, I think, eight or so this weekend. But we see right here on this, we have 210 in the city of Chicago people murdered. Murdered. Now, now hold on. Let me make sure I'm very clear to our viewers right here. I want to turn back to the camera right here and, uh, and address our audience. Now, when you look at this Slate article and you look at these Slate statistics, these aren't necessarily people who had been murdered. That's why I wanted to correct it. Uh, some of these are, you know, justifiable homicides. I guess you would call them people who uh, shoot somebody who breaks into the house. These include police shootings. These include uh, suicides and so forth. So just take all these things with a grain of salt. These aren't necessarily gangsters out shooting themselves in the street. But if we can turn back here to the, uh, to the screen here. Now, let's just randomly, Marcos, just click on some of these other places. I just want to see... What else? Does, does anything top the city of Chicago, which should be the safest city in the nation as far as gun crime? Let's see. We have, uh, hold on, what's that? Houston. Okay, we got 120 people. That's a large number, but still not as many as Chicago. Yeah, just click around. Let's see what we got on, got on there. Okay, Detroit, Michigan, which, okay, yeah, that's a good example right there, Marcos. Detroit, Michigan, where the police say you have to protect yourself. We're not going to protect you. In a city where the police say they will not protect you, they have 100 and 23 people killed as opposed to 210 in the city of Chicago. Let's just, let's random, let's just see what's going on here. Philadelphia, 116. What else do we have there? Baltimore, 107. And you can see, and I don't, I don't think we're going to top that. I don't think we're going to top that, that first number we have. So just keep this in mind. Next time they say it's for the children, and if you don't turn your guns, you're a racist, and if there's a problem, the police will help you, and if you, somebody breaks into your house, I hope you have a dog and all that. Just keep that in mind. Because they said they don't want you to have your open carry. They don't want you to have your concealed carry. But we had some carrying people right here in the city of Austin, Texas, on July 4th. This is Matthew Bailey, the Austin citizen, student at the University of Texas, U.S. Army veteran, recipient of a Bronze Star with a V device and the Combat Infantryman's Badge while in Iraq. I want to talk about what's going on in our country today, and one of the things that no one is even aware of, it seems to me, is the farm bill that's in the House of Representatives that's about to be passed. 
Okay, do you, does even does anyone realize that we're about to sign up for nearly a trillion dollars of expenditures over the next 10 years? symbol of freedom it brings a bigger message if we wear a if we wear this mask like a, say like a million of us come wear this mask it's a big it brings a bigger message hi my name is chris davis i'm a prior service army i'm here with the pro second amendment rally and the support of the other rallies that we're having out here in Austin today we're out here to uh protest the terror that the government is bringing down upon us in every which way, the First Amendment, Second Amendment, all the way down to the 10th Amendment. What will we do? Stand up like that! Our privacy rights are under attack. What will we do? Stand up like that! Excuse me, sir. You both last year, which is terrible. Oh, um, he, just asked, he asked me to uh, not have a magazine in my firearm and, uh, um, in order to, you know, not cause any tension. I, I respected that. And uh, that's, that's what I've decided to do. And was your, was your firearm loaded? Uh, negative, sir. It, it was a, a loaded magazine, but there wasn't a, a, a round in the chamber. different groups are meeting for different reasons, basically supporting different solutions. Um, I believe, I think we all believe that um, this 4th of July is not a time to celebrate uh, American freedoms, but to uh, reestablish them. I think that as my generation matures, it's only going to get worse. Uh, so I think we've got to take a stand now before something more drastic has to happen. I think that this is a peaceful revolution today. And, uh, 14. 14. Yeah. Okay, so what motivates you to... I want to remind people that wasn't just a pro Second Amendment rally. That's also a anti NSA rally. People there from various sides. Not, I mean, not just your first, uh, your Second Amendment and your Fourth Amendment. For all the amendments, people want all their rights. And you saw the people marching down the street and the people who did not choose to participate on the sidewalk. And they're like, "Well, who's this Edward Snowden guy? These guys are talking about. Why are these guys marching for their freedom on the Fourth of July? Don't they know they're just supposed to sit around and eat hot dogs and so forth? No." People went out there and exercised their rights, and I was very happy to see the turnout that we had here in the city of Austin. I hope you had a, uh, a similar experience in your town. Jakari Jackson here, and I want to talk to you for a second about water. You know about ProPure, our flagship water purification system, but check out some of our portable water filter products at InfoWarsStore.com. The clearly filtered water pitcher. Also, for those of you on the go, we have the Athlete Edition filtered water bottle and the RAD Eliminator Pro Filtered Sports Bottle that removes radiation. And keep in mind, we have replacement filters for all of these products. The ever popular grab and go bag favorite, the Life Straw, the Crystal Quest Shower Filter System, and the Aquapod Kit, great for mass storage of water. And while you're at the InfoWars shop, pick up a copy of our latest book, 31 Days to Survival. You can find all this and more at the InfoWarsStore.com and don't forget, it's your support that funds our operation. Sign up for our free newsletter at InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter.